I appreciate that. And I'd like to address my question to Craig, who seems to have had experience outside of the state. My question relates to this woman's question uh, about other commissions in other states. The sense I've gotten from people who uh, have questions about the initiative, and, and even though I'm, I'm favoring what I'm reading so far, I, I have some questions. I wonder if you, Craig, could point to a state and a commission that has this kind of ethics commission where you feel it's worked very well. I know that Jan said you looked at several. Could you tell us where you found one that works very well? Because I think when we live in this state and we've never had one, it seems kind of, ooh, scary or weird or, you know, what, what's going on? So will you tell us some that we can, can follow or look at and see how it's worked there? Thank you, Lynn, great question. <laughs> I'm going to ask Janet to help me here. Frankly, I did not do the research in other states. We, we, allowed the, we let the staff do that. My main concern in speaking earlier was the fact that I want to see more voter involvement in this state, and I believe ethics reform is one way to get that. Janet, can you help me here and speak to that, and how, how we research other states? Yes. Um, you know, I can't think right after the top of my head of other states that we looked at. I know Colorado. I know. Um, Washington State. If you really want to get into this and you really want to see what other states do, I really urge you to go to the website of the National Council of State Legislat Legislatures, NCSL, and you will find there like volumes of comparative analysis of different codes of ethics from different 40 states. So that's the National Council of State Legislatures. And it's a national, bipartisan, nonprofit, you know, corporation. They're not a corporation, I guess. They're an association where all the state legislatures go and deal with various topics to kind of see, well, what are you doing in Montana? Well, here's what we're doing in Georgia, you know, that kind of thing. And there's a wealth of information on there about all the states and what they do and what commissions they have and what their powers are and all of that if you want to get into this. Okay, uh, Mark uh, Stolt. Alpine, coming down. Hello, uh, I have some concerns about this. Um, how much money our tax dollars will be paid to our attorneys for each complaint? filed by any three people in the state. It, you can have somebody from New York file a complaint along with two other people. These could be frivolous or otherwise. Just how much of our tax dollars? Then secondly, what will be the salaries per year of these 20 commissioners? Unaccountable if they will be 20, well, there are 20 and then five there's, there's the 20 don't get anything, but the 5 do. How much money will that be? Do you know? Okay, the, the, five, hey. the, the 5 commit, the 20, they... Oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> there, okay, you want to add you Yeah, know, no, go ahead and finish it. No, oh, I just said, okay. okay. In my humble opinion, uh, this uh, will set up a whole new branch in, uh, in our state government, unaccountable to the Attorney General, to our, the uh, judicial, uh, which is the ju judicial, the executive, or the legislature. They will be separate and unaccountable to each. Am I not understanding this right? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, quickly. Um, the 20 people don't do anything. The 20 people, as, as you know, don't do anything. They just get their names put in a hat. Um, the five people who are chosen who do serve five-year terms on the Ethics Commission do not get paid. They get per diem and reimbursement spell. Okay, they get what legislators get, which right. is per diem. Um, but they don't make any money doing this. Okay. Um, the, and lobbyists can't give them any money, obviously. So the cost of this entire commission, um, we estimated that the cost, including the one-time startup cost, would total 472000 The legislative fiscal analyst 
uh, said that they thought it would cost 536000 I think given what our legislature spends and what they appropriate every year, I think this is a bargain. You may think what you like, but I think it is an absolute bargain to have honest legislators who represent us and care about us and not special interests. The, the accountability, let me address this because people are concerned that there's no judicial review, that this ethics commission doesn't answer to anybody. Okay, the ethics commission is part of the legislative branch. By law, under our constitution, that is how it must be. Because you will remember that Article 6, Section 10 of the Utah State Constitution says legislators and only legislators may sanction their own members. Therefore, you cannot have the executive branch you know, admonishing legislators. Only the legislative branch may admonish or discipline its own members. That is how it is under our Constitution. Therefore, this Ethics Commission must answer to and be part of the legislature. Now, there's a concern out there I've heard that people are worried there's no judicial review. Well, think about that. Constitutionally, there cannot be judicial review. And under the current system, there is no judicial review, and there cannot be, because our Constitution requires a separation of power. And therefore, you cannot have judges in the judicial branch admonishing, disciplining, or sanctioning members of the legislative branch. That is how our Constitution reads, and that is under the current law, and that is how it must be under this initiative, because of the Constitution. And what was the other concern? How much money the attorney's fees? Oh, attorney's fees, the Johnny Cochran provision. Okay, um, well, we sort of wanted, originally the drafters wanted to make this fair and say nobody gets their attorney's fees. You know, you serve in the legislature, you get accused of something, you pay for your own attorneys. What happened in the uh, legislative ethics example that Carl used in the, in the PowerPoint presentation was that this representative was accused of bribery or some bad thing, and he retained his own attorney who was rather expensive, and he couldn't pay for it. And then what he went and what he did afterwards was he held a bunch of fundraisers and special interests and lobbyists paid for his attorney's fees. And we thought, oh no, that's just more of the same. <laughs> we don't want that happening. So we provided that the legislator could retain his own attorney and the legislature would pay, or not the legislature, we the taxpayers would pay for that. Now remember the complainants don't get their attorney's fees paid for. And we just thought that would be fair. Remember we're bending over backwards to try to provide these accused legislators due process and the right to be heard and all of that. So if you object to that, then I encourage you, if this is enacted, I encourage you to get a hold of your new ethical legislator and ask him to do away with that provision, you know, or to reduce that provision. I mean, we were trying to be ultra super fair and protective of legislators, but if you object to that, I encourage you to be vocal about that, and maybe the legislature will take that out or limit it. The dollar amount? There is no dollar amount. How much are we don't know. An hour? Whoa! It depends. Two hundred dollars plus. Some are, some not so much. You know, some are way more than that. The attorneys request are six hundred dollars an hour. But yeah, you know, there's no dollar amount in this initiative. That's right. And if you object to that, then if it's enacted, I think you should ask the legislature to change that. Yes. The attorneys' fees here are to be paid the attorney of the legislator. If we have no complaints, we're going to have no cost. If we have unethical behavior, we're going to have complaints. Now, the word frivolous has been used here several times this evening. I think the initiative makes every effort to make sure that frivolous complaints are disposed of at the early hearing process before a complaint is ever heard before the commission. That's really good. Okay. Uh, Erica Taylor, would you like to come forward? This is her title, Mom. <laughs> I think most of my concerns have been.